that Wyoming will be your new home. Life on the Red Horse Ranch. <laughs> Since Trigger Dawson, leader of a band of outlaws, was killed in a gun battle with the sheriff's posse from Roaring River, Alabama has brought young Dewey Dawson to the Red Horse. Dewey didn't make such a good showing on his first appearance at the ranch, and Mr. Carter insists that the boy cannot stay. But as we join the folks at the ranch, we hear the boys singing down at the bunkhouse while Alabama is talking to Dewey. See what I mean, little fella? Well, yes, I, I guess so. Only I don't see why Pep had to go off for it. Well, you and your pap was pretty good pals, wasn't you? Of course we was. He didn't like nobody but me, he said. Not even the mother fellows always going off with him. Well, wasn't there nobody else you ever liked at all except your pa? Of course not. Everybody hated pa. He said so. At Sheriff over at Ron River, he said Pep was bad. But he wasn't, was he? Dewey, I'm beginning to understand just how many good things you're going to have to remember about your dad. But about your staying here with us now... I don't want to stay. Why, sure you do. Why, I've got a cot all fixed for you down at the bunkhouse. Now, you can't back out on me like that, can you? Do you want me to stay and live here? Why, sure I do. None of the mother fellas does. Now, what makes you think that? Why, say, you're going to like them, and they like you, too, when they get to knowing you. Well, they better not try to hurt Elizabeth again. Well, I'll see to that. Now, I'll tell you what you do. We'll go down to the bunkhouse. And... Oh, is that you, Cookie? Yes, Mr. Alabama. I hope you excuse me, but is that poor little dog around here somewhere? You mean do his dog, Cookie? Sure, that's the one. He looked powerful sick to me, all skinny-like. Of course he ain't. That's the way he's made. Just the same. I figure I better bring him some scraps from the table. 
Come on here, you little much. You feed yourself. <laughs> Better watch out, you'll bite. Go along with you, boy. No dog gonna bite when he knows somebody trying to be nice to him. <laughs> Law <laughs> me. Lucky he didn't eat that grub there. <laughs> I guess he was kind of hungry. Yo. They wouldn't feed him nothing over there at Roaring River. He appreciates that grub, all right. Now, come along, Dewey. We'll go down and have a good time with the boys in the bunkhouse. Well, come on, Elizabeth. Come on. <laughs> I don't know what the boys will say to having a dog in the bunkhouse, but I guess it'll be all right. We've had everything else in there. Now, remember what I said. Here we are. Come on, boys. Do and me come in here just to hear some music. I reckon we can give him plenty of that, sure. such as it is. Alabam, I'm telling you, that dog's got to go. He can stay outside, but not in here. Either that or else I'm leaving. Oh. Yeah, he can sleep in a barrel or someplace. He looks too much like a mutton to suit me. Of course he ain't no mutton. Now, remember what I've been telling you, Dewey. I don't think your dog would mind staying outside. Come on, boy. Well, maybe he'll get lost out there. Oh, no. Cookie will take care of him. Come on, boy. Uh, there you are. Well, maybe I'd better stay with him. No, we'll go out and see that he's all right in a minute. Uh, now let's have some music for my partner here. What'll it be? Well, I'll sing one for him. Just listen to this. Well, go right ahead, Alan. Well, I've got no use for the women. Oh, well, <laughs> <one> big, <no. laughs> Arizona, you longhorn Brahma, you. That ain't no song for a boy. Don't appreciate Tex, good music. Yeah. Don't you know sing one for him. Oh, all right, yeah. young fella, how about this one? What is it? What is it? Why, it's for Town. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> As I was going to Fenordland Town, riding a horseback, walking before met a king and a queen, music come for riding a horseback and walking before. <laughs> my mare stood still, she threw me in the ditch, she bruised my shirt, she dirted my skin. I mounted my bridle and saddle again, and with my ten toes I rode over the plain. <laughs> I pulled off my head with a natural disgrace, asked them the way, though I knew not the place. It made them all ashamed, they scarcely looked down and asked them the way to Penordal in town. <laughs> I stopped at a tavern to stay all night, called for my supper, I thought it was right. A whole cake and harmony and a dead possum's head. Die, old man, let's all go to bed. <laughs> I went to bed to take a night's ease. I scarcely could sleep for the lice and the fleas. I rolled and tumbled and scratched all night. I scarcely could scratch just as fast as they'd bite. <laughs> I rode up the streets, no one could I see. The streets were all crowded, gazing at me. The bells were all told, the people did stare to see a coach and six horses drawn by a gray man. Did <laughs> <laughs> that suit you, do it? Uh, sure, I guess it did. <laughs> Say, come to think of it, we got one the boys sure to like. Let's sing Billy Boy. My name ain't yeah. Billy, it's Dewey. <laughs> uh, now, you better let them go on and sing while they're in the notion, Dewey. Go on, boys, let's hear Billy Boy. Yeah. Be sure to listen now, Dewey. Billy Boy, Billy Boy, oh, where have you been, Charmin' Billy? I have 
been to seek a wife. She's the joy of my life. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. Did she bid you to come in, Billy boy, Billy boy? Did she bid you to come in, charming Billy? Yes, she bade me to come in. There's a dimple in her chin. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. She set for you a chair, Billy boy, Billy boy. Did she set for you a chair, charming Billy? Yes, she set for me a chair. She has ringlets in her hair. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. Now listen to it. Can she make a cherry pie, Dewey boy, Dewey boy? Can she make a cherry pie, charming Dewey? She can make a cherry pie, quick as a cat can wink her eye. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. <laughs> oh, howdy, Mr. Carter. Come on in. I think you better come out here. I want to speak to you a minute. Oh, sure. I'll be right with you. Keep your seat there, Dewey. You can get acquainted with the boys while I'm gone. All right. Uh, what's on your mind, Mr. Carter? Well, uh, I see you didn't send that Dawson boy off like I told you to, Alabama. But, Mr. Carter, I don't see how you can really be serious about that. Why, well, I'm sure the boy will get to like it after he's been here a while. Well, uh, I just come to tell you that Rose thinks the same way as you do. Oh, and, uh, say. Yeah, well, you know how she is when she makes up her mind. <laughs> then you mean it's all right? He can stay? Uh, yes, as long as the rest of the boys don't raise too much rumpus about it. Uh, uh, but where's the dog he had around here? Why? Oh, it's over there by the door. Cookie! Cookie, yes. come over here! Yes, Mr. Carter. You call on me. Uh, you take that dog just as far from this ranch as you can and get rid of him. Yes, I will. I'll take him. Uh, uh, Mr. Carter, you just can't take that boy's dog away from him. Well, either the dog goes or, or the boy. Uh, I wouldn't be able to work around here. I won't have him. Well, the kid will be powerful broke up about it. Cookie, okay, yes. you do as I say. Yes, Mr. Carter, but I don't think he look like no sheep. He's just nothing but a dog. Now, now dude, don't you argue with me. You do as I say. Yes, I hear you. Come on here, Mr. Dog, but I don't think you look like a... Mr. Carter, you can't understand how much that dog means to that poor kid. Why, it's all he has. Well, he'll get over it. You can cut him out a horse from the remuda. It'll be worth more to him than a dog anyhow. The boys have been raising an awful fuss about that dog. Well, all right, Mr. Carter. I'll go back and try to tell him. This time, we're afraid our sympathies are with Dewey. But remember this, Cookie hasn't yet gotten rid of Dewey's dog. So be back with us when the Red Horse Ranch is again on the air. <laughs> <laughs>